Hey, Coach. Yeah, obviously, uh, you said on teleconference earlier that you might have some update on Rocket. Any any news? Yeah, I don't have any more uh, news at this point. Um, obviously, he hadn't practiced. He's not in practice today either, so that that would limit him at best uh, in the game, regardless of what we find out. But uh, I don't think it'll be a lengthy injury either way. But um, you know, we we wanted some different guys to look at him, and uh, so that's what we're doing. And and uh, so we should find we'll know something definitely. Um, uh, by this afternoon, what uh, is going on? I'm sorry. I, I thought we might know something now, but we don't. I just last second, I checked my phone to see if I've got any calls on it. So uh, I wish we would know a little bit more, but he hadn't practiced this week. I, I don't think it's a lengthy injury at all, but uh, I can't be 100% sure about that until I find out uh, what what he's been told here today. Dominic still wearing the brace on his knee, but I, I believe he's been obviously cleared uh, to play without it. Is that just something for him for a precaution? And how much does that limit him the, a brace like that? I don't think he feels like it limits him too much. Uh, that's really it's up to him uh, whether he wants to wear it or whether he doesn't. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't wear it. You know, uh, assuming uh, this weekend he would probably have a much bigger role. Um, uh, but he had some success with it on in scrimmages, you know, and ran long runs and things of that nature. So that really at this point is just left up to him. And should we expect to see Antonio Greer this week? Yes. I mean, he's practiced, you know, he, he never, he practiced partially, you know, uh, Indy and things of that uh, before the Western Carolina game, but he's practiced all week. So uh, they've cleared him to do everything and he's been uh, good. Uh, over the last two days, so uh, and he's practicing today, so I expect him to be available. Thanks, Coach. Uh huh. Otis, Coach, is there anything in particular that Marquise Gums needs to improve on to get maybe more action, more action in the passing game? Well, I think he's got to understand the offense a little bit better. You know, and he's getting better at that thing, at, at those things. Understanding what he's doing is going to let him play faster. Um, but uh, we think he is a threat. Um, obviously, we didn't throw the ball a whole lot to the tight ends last week. Um, but uh, that certainly isn't a plan because he's talented as well as Luke and a lot of guys. You know, a lot of guys we have, we, Tyrus yeah. Washington, we feel like we can throw the ball to. But, um, I think his overall, and he's had a good week this week. So I, you know, I would anticipate his play uh, amping up a little bit. Coach, I'll go. My bulldog must have liked your answer or not liked it. One, I'm not sure which. Thanks. Who's that? Your bulldog? Yeah, my bulldog. Yeah, he's, I don't know if he liked it or didn't like your answer, but he's he's letting you know about it. <laughs> oh, he is. Okay. Well, my Lucy. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought team. you were hearing bark. I can't hear though. Jackson. Coach, uh, when Isaac uh, spoke with us yesterday, he talked about uh, playing quarterback in high school and not really being taking really any receiver reps until he got to the college ranks. I'm curious, does he have any, you know, traits, uh, intangibles that, you know, can't make it kind of obvious that he's a quarterback, a former quarterback? Well, I'm assuming quarterbacks would have to have good hands, you know, and, and <laughs> um, he does now. I mean, he's. Of course, Andrew Armstrong made a catch yesterday at practice that was pretty incredible as well. But, um, you know, I talked to him the other day about how – yesterday, actually, about how proud I was for, you know, for him coming from D2 and and performing at a high level. And obviously we love him and all those type things. I said, who, who uh, offered you out of high school? And he said, basically nobody, coach, you know, and – and uh, really, a, really a cool story because what a wonderful kid as well. But uh, he's just a, he's a big athlete uh, that works extremely hard. So I would assume if he went to linebacker and he wanted to get his body uh, linebackerish, uh, that uh, he would be able to play that as well. He, he's just a talented guy that earns everything he gets because he's a hard worker. Bob. Uh 
Uh, hey, Sam. I mean, obviously, you don't, you don't want Rocket to ever miss any time, but how good do you feel about the depth you have there if he is out for a little while? Well, I, I love our depth. You know, I think our dub's really good, and, you know, all of them. Um, you know, AJ and Damo, you know, I keep going back to, you know, two years ago, we had the same guys on the team, and Damo was the starter, you know, uh, later in the season. We kept trying to get him more and more carry. Sometimes we did, sometimes we didn't. But when we did, he was very successful. And uh, so I feel really good. You never want to lose uh, a player uh, to for a game or two or whatever it may be. Um, but uh, that room is is loaded with really good players. And we, we like Isaiah as well. So uh, he got some carries last week, looked pretty good to me, and very physical runner. So. Jimmy's done a nice job recruiting that room, so we feel very confident in, in that room. Uh, if Rocker wasn't able to play, uh, that we'd be fine. I wanted to ask a couple, couple things about Hudson. I, I guess he's played corner safety and now nickel for you, so unless you want to move him to something else, I don't think he's run out of places to play. But just what do you thought about his, his versatility and willingness to do that and adapt and all that? Well, you know, it's hard. I mean, even though even – though uh, you're playing secondary. They're all different. They're different techniques, uh, obviously different assignments. Uh, to be able to do that says a lot about him. Be able, To be able to do that willingly says more about him. Uh, and a quick story, um, w we had told him that he was going to go in on the third series, and the defense went two, three and outs, and HUD goes to Coach Woodson and says, Hey, you know, they've only been out there six plays. I don't know if they've really had enough plays to be getting in the groove of the game and all this kind of stuff. So that's just kind of how, who he is. And he's the ultimate team guy and been as valuable as anybody we've had to the team. I'm not smart enough to remember or, or, or I guess, uh, follow it. What, what, which series did, did Hudson go on the fourth series or the third series, fourth series then? I believe they just put him in on the third series. I think they said, no, 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 that's what we told you. If I'm correct, I think he did go in on third series. That was the plan in our morning staff or our evening staff meeting on Friday night. So I don't know. I can't remember. But he was just being unselfish. Is he was. I mean, nobody does that. I mean, not many. I wouldn't. I'd want. They told me third series. I don't care if it was two plays them guys got out there. It's the third series. Put me in. But – he did have that conversation. I love the kid. Love a lot of them, but he's a very unselfish guy. Could have went in the tank when we told him that, you know, hey, we're not going to send you out there. You are a starter in our mind, but we're not going to send you out there first. He could have, you know, a lot of kids go in the tank on you. This guy's going, hey, I don't think they've had enough reps to get, you know, acclimated to the game quite yet. I guess just how – what does that say about him, you know, attitude, mental, all that stuff? Everything. I mean, now it also tells, tells you that he's a mature guy that understands, but everything. Melissa. Muted. You act like I haven't done this before. Okay, so here we go. Can you comment a little bit about what you guys are going to do for Alex and Ryan and Chris? I know Chris and Alex were here and the first time you goes around, but you're going to put the three and the 15 and have their initials down on the field this season. And just that was the way that you guys are going to honor him them this year. Yeah. Um, and then I think we're going to have Chris's family uh, as honorary captains and things of that nature. And, and, uh, um, I think you said what we're going to, you know, what we're going to do and, and with the numbers and things of that nature. Um, but certainly, you know, it's, it's great to get older, but as you get older, you know, things happen in life that are, you know, you, you go, you go through and obviously not near what the folks, the parents have gone through, but it was just our little, our, our, our way of, saying hey we we respected your son your um uh, and um uh, just our way of letting letting them live through their legacy on 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 the field a little bit thank you
Thank you. Um, hey, Sam, looking at your linebacker room, you came out of spring and it looked like Pooh and Greer were kind of with the ones the most. And then now Pooh had the camp injury, Greer had the camp injury. Uh, and it, with the ones, it was Spence and Thomas yesterday during fastballs. I just wondered maybe kind of what the what that room has been looking like for you. Yeah, I think Jaheim Thomas has been the, the most consistent player for us there in the linebacker room. Obviously, you mentioned the injuries that we've had. Um, you know, obviously, Pooh was the guy that we, you know, and he still is, but he's been beat up. He's been hurt. And, of course, unfortunately, he won't be able to play in the first half Saturday. Um, so it's a little bit – linebacker, honestly, has been a little bit like the old line room where, man, you wish you could find guys that just – put them in a spot and put them next to somebody that they played with the majority of the time, but just injuries haven't, hasn't quite let us do that. And the other, other part of that is, is that we found Spence, you know, we've, we've uh, Crook's gotten a lot of reps uh, and uh, with Greer coming back now that, that should uh, help us and I, that we'd feel good every bit about five guys. And I think in the long run, it'll all help us. I would like to have, two guys sitting out there side by side that's played, you know, together. Um, but I don't know if we'll be able to do that until maybe week three uh, when Pooh gets uh, off his – maybe the second half of, uh, of Saturday's game. Right. But I think it has helped us overall. Is one guy in particular or one spot call defense for you? Like Pooh when he's out there and then – well, the Mike backer, a lot of times we'll do that, but not necessarily in our defense. Uh, we'll have both of them reiterate the call. And, of course, it, you know, you get it to the front, get it to the back end, and then everybody. We're actually working on uh, a little bit of our home crowd noise for defense a little bit today and, and uh, all day tomorrow for that communication. Okay, my last thing. You mentioned Monday that you were sending in a number of plays regarding penalties. I wonder if you got any clarifications on th some things that maybe we didn't see that got called that, you know, that would help. Yeah, and a couple of them, to be honest with you, we we showed to the team because they needed to know the interpretation uh, of the officiating crew from the SEC. Uh, so we're always – you don't necessarily send in – the penalties to say, well, I'm right and you're wrong. You find out the explanation of why the call was made. Uh, there was a few of them that we that they felt like that, you know, maybe shouldn't have been called and things of that nature. And I guess if you did every single play, you'd find some that they should have called too. You, you know what I mean? So, right. um, but uh, the one, let's say uh, when John Morgan uh, got the personal foul for, uh, hitting the quarterback low. Um, you know, my, mine was, I felt like he was held and, and thrown into the quarterback. And the interpretation was when you take that edge, when you turn that edge, it's really your responsibility to stay high on the quarterback. And then we showed the, uh, this, uh, Clemson quarterback sliding, obviously we showed that to KJ because he was short and we showed it to the team because, that's a dead ball at that point. And even though the personal foul came after that, Duke still retained the football. We had in our second and our first scrimmage, we had kind of an identical deal. It was a late hit out of bounds uh, on fourth down. The penalty was put in force, but uh, the offense, uh, or excuse me, it was on the offense. The, the second team offense came back out on the field. Um, we talked about the slide because basically when a quarterback starts to slide, you've got to avoid him at all cost. And even if, even if you're airborne, you know, at that point, trying to tackle him, you got to take your head out of it. You got to throw your arms out. I mean, you've got to avoid him at all costs. And if your helmet hits him at all, you, you, that's going to be a personal foul. So we did show the team that, and they were just learning moments from us. I thought our game was well officiated on Saturday, but we did learn some things about rule interpretation and just exactly how they see it uh, on those two circumstances. Got it. Hey, Sam, you mentioned earlier this week wanting to get Tyrone Broden going a little bit. I'm curious how his week's been and maybe what do you want to see more of with him? 
Well, we played him more. You know, we played him more with the ones this week. I think he's had a heck of a two days. Um, you know, he he did such a nice job as a gunner on the punt team. I mean, just a fantastic job uh, Saturday. Um, we need to get him involved uh, He because he's – He's, you know, the the separation of the wide receivers is not like this. You know, it's close, and uh, he's a guy that's played Division One football and and uh, uh, done a nice job there. So we need to amp him up, and the only way you can do that is put him with the guys and see if you can feel good about it. And that's what we've done, and he's had a good week. I know we talked a lot about Jaden Johnson since it feels like late in camp, but when you have a guy that plays like he did and an opener kind of takes his camp to a game setting, what's that, what do you think that does for his confidence? I think a lot. I hope it does. Um, what you, what you're always concerned about is it happens and then you become content with, well, I showed you I could do it. Uh, we've obviously talked to Jaden about some of those things too. And I, I don't think there's any way, I think he likes where he's at. I think he knows that he can improve a lot, but, you know, with the pick in the pass, had a lot of open field tackles. Uh, obviously, uh, the fumble that he caused, um, you know, and he went into camp maybe a one, maybe a one B, whatever it is, and came out as, you know, as good a safety as we have. So uh, a lot of good things happened with him. He's always had the talent. His mind just allowed him here recently, here in the last six months, seven months, uh, to go ahead and let that body go do what it always could do. Right. Hey, Coach, uh, Kent State's got five new first-year starters on the offensive line. I was just curious, you've been – you were an offensive line coach for 25 years on the FBS level. Have you ever had an instance like that where you had to break in five brand-new guys? And if so, like, what are some of the challenges that you run into in a situation like that? You know, I have not. Now, I've – had a lot of jobs where they were five new starters for me, you know, but mm -hmm. not necessarily for the team. Um, well, there's a lot of challenges because, you know, it takes you a little while to figure out who's tough, who you can depend on, things of that nature. That's, that's as offensive line, that's key. Uh, who's your communicator? Who's your leader? Where you want to put him? Uh, you know, do you have a center that can play? Can you protect the edge? You know, all those type things go into it and you just start piecing it in. And uh, obviously it takes a little while. And I look for them to, uh, their old line to become better and better. They do have some skill and some talent, you know. And and then those guys haven't played, you know, because you said it, but then with them being transfers and things of that nature. So it's a lot easier to bring one, maybe two in on O-line, but bringing in you know, a lot that are starters becomes difficult. And then they don't know their coach and all that kind of stuff. But I thought they did a nice job uh, last week. I look for them to play much better than they did last week. But there's there's a lot of challenges there. And uh, t to me, they've done a nice job of coaching them. On your end, with the week one game, obviously you'd expect everybody to be amped up and excited and, and everything. But with the way the score came out and then looking at Kent State's score against UCF, is there anything extra you feel like you need to say? I mean, you got a pretty mature bunch, but is there anything extra you need to say to make sure that the focus is right? Well, I talked to him about uh, yesterday after practice. I mean, are we going to be a team that needs to be surprised? I mean, or, you know, if you, if you just look at college football the first week and what happened, I mean, are we going to have to learn a lesson? from us not playing our best ball or are we just going to go play our best ball and play uh, against ourselves and not worry about who we're, you know, the opponent. I obviously know you're going to get amped up more against a name, you know, whoever the name may be, school, somebody in the SEC than possibly you would against Western Carolina. I mean, I understand that. But at the same time, uh, if you don't get ready to play, you don't prepare, uh, you're going to get beat, and we're going to be one of those teams that everybody in the country is talking about. And I just kept asking them, do we need to be surprised? Do we need to be taught a lesson, or are we just going to go practice hard? I wasn't particularly, particularly happy with the way that the complete practice went yesterday, and I talked to them about that after practice. Thank you, Coach. 
Coach, uh, a lot of the men, you just mentioned a lot of the challenges with the O-line communications leaders. Um, I'm wondering how your O-line's looking this week in terms of in practice with those things. Yeah, I thought the ones looked really good yesterday. Um, the problem, it's not, it depends on how you look at it. But, you know, I'd like to find five guys that this is our left tackle, this is our right tackle, this is this. I would like to find that and then be able to play you know, right now up to around eight guys. I, I would like to do that. We haven't been able to do that just simply because we've been beat up here, beat up there, things of that nature. Now, are the five guys that started uh, last Saturday our five best? Heck, I don't know. It, it is nice to have Brady back this week. Uh, but uh, consistency of those guys, you want to find your five best and let them go play, and then hopefully you've got up to eight. Uh, we're still not there yet. We're not healthy enough to be there uh, at this point, and uh, it's frustrating uh, a little bit. However, I do think it'll help us down the road, but uh, it is a little frustrating. And we're not going to have ones and twos in a game, so I think part of my frustration is uh, we have some guys on the twos that don't have any um, uh, um, experience. And um, so at times in practice, it doesn't look quite as good. And I get frustrated with that because our experienced guy uh, might be beat up a little bit. So uh, I think we're going to be fine. I think in the long run, it's going to help us. But that has been a little somewhat frustrating. And then last one, you had a lot of freshmen that contributed late and played their first game last week. Just how are they looking and responding in practice this week? Yeah, I was proud of them. I think, you know, anytime you can get more guys in the game, which we all know who's followed us since I've been here, we haven't had an opportunity to do that much. Maybe twice. I think Auburn last year and and maybe Pine Bluff before that. And the rest of it is we, we're holding on to everything we have, you know. Um, so it is fun. I think it's good for team morale, those things. It's good to – get somebody out there on a Saturday and is he as good as what you thought in practice or is he better, uh, whatever the case may be. So I thought it was uh, exciting to get that. We had guys like John Hill and some guys been around here a while, uh, Kyle Thompson that hadn't hadn't played and uh, really was excited to get them in there. And they all played pretty darn good. They played extremely hard. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it, Coach. All right, guys. Have a good day.